Hello guys, welcome back to another Genshin video. So the 4 star characters for the Shinhog banner and the Zhaoi one were literally just released like 30 seconds ago at the time of recording this. They literally just posted the news. So I'm going to tell you guys what's on the banner and give you a brief summary about those characters on the banners to see if you do want to wish for them. So without further ado, let's get right on to the news. The 4 stars that are actually going to be on Shinhei and Zhao's banner are going to be Yujin, Ningguang, and Changyun. Now we don't really know too much about Yujin, but all we do know is that she'll be boosting your damage based on like how many other elements are in your party. So she could be pretty interesting, but they haven't released too much about it just yet. So I can't really give too much input on her at the moment. But Shinhei, they actually released a good amount of information for her, where she'll start boosting cryo damage dealt by your teammates based on her attack. So she could be pretty good and pretty interesting based on those things. So if you do get Shinhei, you will be using her with other Cryo teammates. So this is starting to build characters for certain teams. For example, the Ito, Goro teams, where they're trying to build everything around all Geo. And now it looks like they're trying to build everything around all Cryo. So this could be very interesting. Since we don't know anything else about those two characters, I'm just going to give a brief rundown about Ningguang and Chongyin and let you decide if you want them or not. Now first I want to talk about Ning Wong. Ning Wong is actually my favorite character in the game, so I might be a little bit biased, you know, just C6, level 90, triple crowned, you know, I'm not too biased though, I promise. But anyway, she is definitely a great character to have if you do want a good main DPS. I would say if you do want to build her, wait till you get Constellation 2. Constellation 2 gives her a big power spike in her rotations and her total damage overall. This will boost your Ningguang by the same amount and you'll just definitely tell if you have this constellation. So I'd say if you're wanting to push for constellation 2 you can or if you just have C0 Ningguang or C1, I'd definitely give it a try. And if you're at C5, I definitely recommend you get C6. C6 will boost her damage by <laughs> just, you, I, I don't even you know. Yeah, C6 is absolutely crazy for Ningguang and it's actually amazing what Ning Wong can do. She's definitely really fun too. You can do very cool rotations that require many inputs, which is actually one of the main reasons why I like her. So I definitely recommend Ning Wong as a main DPS if you don't have enough already or you're just looking for someone to play. I'd say she's definitely in the A tier of main DPS characters in Genshin. She's not like S tier for like maybe Ganyu, Hu Tao, Raiden, but she's definitely really good, so I really recommend Ning Wong. Now Chongyun. Chongyun can be used very well in certain teams for giant melt damages or just to convert someone else's damage to cryo and do like cryo kaching builds or whatever. But me personally, I don't like him very much, but I've seen people use him very well and people who have liked him. But he also is one of the least popular characters and is kind of not used all too much. But I don't really have enough experience in Chongyin to give an input on him. I've heard his C2 is pretty good, but I don't really know much else, to be honest. I can't really give input. The only thing I can tell you about Chongyin is that he is one of the least utilized characters in Genshin. And that's all I can really tell you. Oh snap! Okay, hold on, hold on. They actually also released Zhang Li's and Ganyu's 4 stars. They've never done this before where they released them both at the same time. Okay, so Zhang Li and Ganyu's 4 stars are going to be Xing Cho, Beidou, and Yan Fei. Okay, all I'm going to say is that this banner is absolutely stacked. If you're wishing for Zhang Li and Ganyu, you will be happy with the choices you have. Let me just give a quick rundown on these characters. They probably don't need any introduction, but you know, let me just go over them just in case you don't know how OP these characters are. Okay, so let's start off with Xing Chou. If you don't have Xing Chou, run this abandon. That's all I'm gonna say. This character is only at like S tier characters in the entire game. He has a strong elemental skill that has high percentages, and then he's also a hydro applicator who's really good at applying Hydro really rapidly for a lot of melts, vaporize, and frozen reactions going crazy all the time. And this rain sword damage, it may look a little low, but that can fuck up so many times in one burst that can get up to like maybe over 600% scaling or something. It's absolutely crazy, and he is definitely one of the best characters in the entire game. 
So this beta is pretty stacked for him. And every single one of his constellations is just a strict upgrade. None of them are bad constellations. They are just absolute giant upgrades for Xing Cho. So the Ganyu and Zhang Li Wei ones are about to be absolutely insane. Now the second one on the list is actually Beto. Beto is also an insanely cracked character for support because she can do a lot of off-field electro DPS with her elemental burst. Basically when a normal charge attacks hit with her elemental burst on, it will do a lightning discharge that will do ton of damage to enemies and chain between them as well. Also, her elemental skill has a core mechanic where if you press it at the exact time you get hit, it will do a giant slash immediately instead of having to hold it to get the giant slash. She is really insanely strong and the constellations are also really good as well. The main constellations that are mainly going to benefit a support Beto are Constellation 2 and Constellation 6. The Constellation 2 allows your lightning to jump two more times so it just makes it very more useful and help card control way easier. And a C6 just increases surrounding opponent's electro resistance by 15%. Beto is definitely one of the best supports in the game. Even though in like the top players she's actually not used that much, for like mid players or even in game players like me still, she's still definitely one of the best characters to use to park a lot of electro and do tons of raw electro damage. So if you don't have a Beto as well, I also highly recommend you want this Beto get at least one Beto because she is super fun with her full counters and she's super strong. Now let's talk about Yan Fei. I've seen people have cracked out Yan Fei's and she's pretty similar to Ning Wong where she does normal attacks to charge up a charge attack and then she uses the charge attack and then does that over and over. But her skills and abilities are a little different where basically her elemental skill will also give her stacks of the charge attack and then her elemental burst will do AoE power damage and then will repeatedly give you stacks at certain intervals. Once again, I don't really know too much about Yan Fei since, you know, I only have her at level 20 out of 40. But I do know she's a pretty good and reliable DPS, but if you do want to try her out in a trial and see if you like her or look up any other guides or showcases of Yan Face, I highly recommend you do so because I can't really give you much information here. My bad. So yeah, that was definitely out of the blue. Um, not expected at all. And they also released both of the weapon banners as well. I am just missing out. What is going on? So anyway, let's talk about weapon banner. The first weapon banner that's actually coming along is going to be Calamity Queller, which is a new 5-star polar arm that's probably going to be the best in slot for Shin Hei, along with the Primordial Jane Wing Spear, which is the best in slot for Zhao. Unless you have Homer. And along with those weapons, the 4 stars are going to be Favonius Warbell, the Flute, Witsith, Dragon's Blade, and Favonius Greatsword. Since there is a lot of information going on right now, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what these do. Favonius Warbo is great for energy recharge teams, for example if you want to put it on your Fischl, Diona, and even Venti. So if you need more energy recharge on those bow characters, it's really good on those. The flute is used on absolutely nobody. <laughs> I've never seen anybody actually use the flute unless they put it on like the Chi Chi. So I do not recommend you try to go for a flute. Witch Sips really good on all Catalyst users for damage. So for example, Ni Guang is really good with it for the crit damage substat. It's good for Mona, it's good for Lisa, it's good for Yan Fei. All the main DPS or like support DPS characters is really good on. This Spear, I haven't seen anyone use it that much. It does increase the damage based on how many characters are from Liwei. So if you do have a whole entire Liwei team, then maybe you could consider trying to get this weapon. And then Favonius Greatsword isn't used that often by many characters, but it is pretty nice if you do need some energy recharge on those characters. Now they also released the Calamity Quellers Polarm substats, so I'm going to pop that up on screen right now. It actually shows us what materials we need to farm to get this weapon ascended too, which is very nice. So the Calamity Queller has a high base attack of 741. Jesus Christ, with that attack percentage substat of 16.5% at level 90. And you will get plus 12% to all elemental damage bonuses just from putting on this weapon. And you will obtain consummation for 20 seconds after using the elemental skill, which will increase your attack by 3.2% per second. The attack increase has a maximum of 6 stacks as well. And when the character equipped with this weapon is not on the field, the attack increase is actually doubled. So this is probably going to be perfect for Shin Hei because she's going to be not on the field all too much. So which is why the attack increase will be doubled when it's not on the field. And after using an elemental skill, you're actually getting an attack increase per second. So that is actually pretty nice. 
I'm pretty sure it's only going to be used on her unless there's any other character that can be used on. Maybe for example, this could be pretty good on Jang Ling. Since she will not be on the field too often, it will be swapped off and she'll get that doubled attack bonus. But that's all I can really think of right now. So that's it for the first weapon banner. Now the second weapon banner will actually have Vortex Fang Shusher and Almost Bow. Which is pretty obvious because Almost Bow is the best in soft for Ganyu and Vortex Fang Shusher I don't really know too much about it. I know it could be pretty good on Zhongli, but we already have so many other polearms we can use on Zhongli. I don't even know if it's the best in slot anymore. And the four stars on this banner will actually be the Sacrificial Bow, the Favonius Sword, Favonius Codex, Dragon's Bane, and the Lithic Blade. Now, Sacrificial Bow is the best in slot for Diona, so if you use Diona, this is pretty good for her. And I don't really know anyone else who uses this bow good. The Favonia Sword is pretty good on people like the Traveler, Jean, and Kaya because it does give an energy recharge substat and that could be pretty good on some characters. Favonius Codex isn't used on too many people but it does give a nice energy recharge substat and an energy passive so it could be substituted until you get a better weapon. The Dragon's Bane is pretty nice at high refinements. It gets out damaged easily by other weapons but once it gets high refinements it actually gets pretty good. And then the Lithic Blade is just like the Lithic Pole Arm where the more people you have from Liwe in your party the more attack increase and damage you will deal. The Dragon's Bane is pretty good on people like Zhang Ling and Hu Tao. And the Lithic Blade I haven't seen anyone use so maybe you can find a use for it if you decide to roll on the banner. Now should you wish on these banners? I think the Shinhei and Zhao banners are pretty nice, we'll have to see how good Yujin is actually in game to determine whether you should wish on it or not. But of course, if you want Shinhei, if you want Zhao, just roll for it. If you like the 4 stars, just roll for it. It really doesn't matter. Don't let other YouTubers try to debate you to not getting it because they're not going to be helpful. If you really do like the character, just roll for them. It'll be way better for you to enjoy this game more instead of voting for characters you don't like just for the sake of having more damage. But the Ganyu and Xiaomi one? Oh my god. These are absolutely cracked banners, okay? Those are so good for you to wish for. So if you're already wishing for Ganyu and Zhongli, you better be jumping for joy now. Because that is an absolutely cracked banner. You should definitely roll on this banner. Because Zhongli is a giant shield that will make you practically invincible. And Ganyu has the most broken charge attacks in the game that have 600% scaling I think with no core down. So it's a definitely must summon on those two banners. And then the weapon banners, I once again don't really recommend rolling on weapon banners. I think they are pretty trash. If you are rolling for those characters and you are in desperate need for a weapon, make sure you roll for the character and then try to go for the weapon. Cause sometimes people go for the weapon and then go for the character for some reason. So if you don't get the character you want, now you just have a weapon that you don't know who to use on. So make sure you always try to go for the character before you go for the weapon. And the 4 stars on both of the banners are kinda meh. They're not insanely good or anything. There are some good picks on both of the banners. But the majority of the 4 stars aren't really that exciting. So yeah, that's pretty much all for me. I did not expect them to release all the information for all of the Wii ones and both of the weapon banners all at once. They've never done this before, so it's kind of hectic right now. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are wishing, good luck, because those posts can sometimes beat you up and make you sad. So good luck on all your wishes, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. <sighs>